Hi, so this is going to be the quick um, video of how to replace your Microsoft Excel with Minitab for the regression analysis part of this project. So um, as you can see in our project here for regression and correlation, um, students are expected, you know, to use Microsoft Excel and you should if you can, because it's it's a lot nicer. This um, summary output is a little bit nicer as far as the output and what it gives. Um, but if you are having trouble with Microsoft Excel, there is an alternative for Minitab. So when doing the project, I encourage you, it says to watch the walkthrough video. I encourage you to use the walkthrough video. And then when the time comes to go to the Excel, come to this video to do the mini tab part because you'll replace that Excel with the mini tab. But then go back and finish watching that walkthrough video. It's going to go through all the interpretations and everything, the hypothesis test. So it's going to take you through the um, full project. This is solely just for two components of the summary output and that regression line, that scatter plot. Okay, so the first thing I do is, you know, obviously you would just go to the Google sign up sheet, um, select my NBA team. I chose um, the Washington Wizards and I chose hide and blocks. So this is how it looks in Microsoft Excel after I go through that walkthrough video, right? And it has like, height and blocks and with the labels because it looks nice when it has the labels on the line fit plot and um you know and here's the summary output where it gives you the correlation coefficient the coefficient of determination it gives you the y-intercept the slope and the p-value so this i like this little um out summary output, you know, and this is just the screenshot that you can take, right? So if you go into mini tab and input the same information, you know, here's height, here's block. So it looks similar as an Excel all the way through. Um, however, now with mini tab to get the same summary output, we're going to do um, one piece um, and that's going to stat here on the top menu regression and there's a whole menu of regression stuff honestly we're just in an introductory statistics course so we're not going to get into law non-linear binary logistic which is really fun by the way <laughs> but you will later on probably in your major we're going to go ahead and just do a fit in line plot this will give us everything we need on top of like that re that line now um, it, once you click it it's going to come up with a response and predictor response is the response variable. It's what it's what um, how much is how much of that variable is explained by the input. In this case, I'm going to try to explain the number of blocks by height. I think if people are I have this assumption in my head that if people are taller, then maybe they can block better in basketball. I don't know. Right. So this is going to give me whether or not there's a correlation. Once I do my hypothesis test and say there is a, you know, I can test like the significance of that correlation coefficient. But for now, I'm just going to like say, okay, well, I do want to see if blocks are explained by height. So my response will be blocks, right? And my height will, um, will be the predictor, the input. And my regression model, I'm going to go ahead and do linear. Now you can go ahead and click these options, but if you did, you could, it just has, you know, some stat mumbo jumbo stuff. Um, here um, in the options here next to graphs. So graphs has these little different graphs, which we don't really need. Um, but options we can go in and we could do transformations, which we don't really want to do here. But we maybe want to display a confidence interval. If you can recall in 12.6, we did outliers and we said that, you know, anything outside a 95% confidence interval in a normal probability plot were outliers. So in the confidence level, um, maybe I'm going to do the extra credit, right? And maybe I'm going to do a hypothesis test. So not only am I going to get here that confidence level graph that I need, but also it'll give me a um, p-value with respect to an alpha of 0.05, or in other words, a 95% confidence level. 
So if you intend on doing the hypothesis test, I encourage you to go ahead and click options in this menu and display confidence interval and put the uh, confidence you want. If you wanted a 1% alpha, then this would be a 99% confidence level. So I chose alpha to be 0 0.05, so I'm gonna put 95 here. Um, my title of my graph or my whole thing is gonna be height versus blocks. You could also do um, height explains the number of, you know, whatever you wanted to write there. <laughs> I just put height versus blocks, no biggie, and hit okay. And then go ahead and hit okay. So now we get all this stuff, right? It's, it comes up, let me lower this. And if you scroll down, you get this nice um, scatter plot. There's your point, see? It has like symbol row if you hover over. I, mini tabs nice like that. These little um, graphs that are dashed, looks like hyper hyperbolic, right? Those are the 95% confidence interval. Anything that lies outside of this is considered an outlier. So we could see that some people with um, that are pretty tall here, you know, like this person is um, about 2.05 meters and their blocks are pretty high. Notice down here, there's one, this one's almost in the interval, but these three are not. So these um, blocks are having low block uh, proportion is low, uh, seems to be an outlier for these three players. In any case, we could see that our um, coefficient of determination is 30.4%. So that means that um, the height, uh, the blocks can be explained by height by 30.4%. And then the 60, um, what is it? 69.6% 6 is going to be the um, explained by other factors, right? And then here's the regression line. The nice thing about this scatter plot is it gives you the regression line. Notice blocks were was y, height was x, so negative 3.784 plus 2.094x, which is the height, which is really nice. If you go up here, it just tells you what the regression equation is right here, and then the r squared. Now, the only thing this doesn't give, which is kind of strange to me, um, is the, uh, like over here in Excel, this one was the cor Pearson correlation coefficient. This one does not give a Pearson correlation coefficient. So you could take the R squared here. And again, for these, what these all mean, notice they're similar in here. Um, you could go to the walkthrough video and then it'll talk, or the screenshot tells you here that multiple R is correlation coefficient, R squared is coefficient determination. So remember that the coefficient of determination is little r squared, the correlation coefficient just squared. So you could take this number here and um, square root it, right? The other way to get the correlation coefficient, which again is the multiple r, by going to stat and basic statistics. And then they can give you the correlation down here. So once you click correlation, it'll tells you like um, it which variables. So I honestly, it doesn't, it's just gonna calculate, you know, the sum of the squares and all that stuff. Um, and again, you can click all this if you wanted. Um, here, notice it's a Pearson correlation. There's a Spearman correlation out there, but we're gonna go ahead and use P. Um, <clears throat> The confidence level is 95, so you can still go ahead and keep that. And then the graphs, um, you know, it's a matrix plot. I really um, wouldn't graph the matrix plot. All you need is the R. And then the results, um, you know, they, I don't know if that's default, so if you want to leave that, and then hit OK. So over here on the navigator side, notice that we didn't lose the other stuff, don't worry. You just click toggle through your tabs here. So the regression analysis is what we just did, right? And the correlation here, you could see that it's 0.551. If we go over to the Excel spreadsheet I did, notice that that's exactly the correlation coefficient is 0.551. So it's up to you how you wanna do it. You could either go to the regression analysis and square root this point, you know, uh, 0.3036 square root, and then you'll get it. 
And then the Pearson correlation is going to be the 0.551. So you'll just have to do two pieces. Okay, so what you can do here is go ahead and copy all of this. It's really nice. Notice that numbers um, 7, 8, 9, and 10 are going to be all this stuff. So number 7, we're going to embed the um, summary output. So here's the summary output. And then in um, number 10, we're going to construct the scatter plot. And the regression line, not to worry, just like over here in this this one, you'll see the regression line as well, right here. <laughs> it has it on the chart. In Minitab, it also has it on the chart up here. <laughs> so um, you can copy everything here, and then that number seven, and then the correlation you're gonna have to fit in as well. So I went ahead and opened a thread. Um, so here's mine, right, with the Excel. For number seven, I have that screenshot of this summary output. And then number 10, I'll put that line, line fit plot or whatever and in um, with the regression line. So I don't really have to touch anything because in the next step, I have to interpret them. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Let me go ahead here and go down and add a new thread. And of course, you're going to have, it's going to look like mine, right? You're going to have all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. But I'm just going to go straight to blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, um, there's stuff here. And then number seven is going to be the summary output. So then all you have to do here is see the regression analysis blocks versus height. All you have to do is go here to this downward arrow and hit copy. And then you can go ahead and paste that in there. Now notice what happens is it gives you um, a bunch of stuff, right? It gives you the regression line. So if you wanted to um, take it piece by piece, you can or some or I don't. However, you're going to design it is fine. What we need is um, for this piece is this all the way here and you can um you know i hit enter a lot but so when you're doing this and let me go ahead and open it a little bit so you can see so number seven you're gonna have all this stuff above like i do in my original post and then when you get to number seven you'll want to paste that stuff and then it's going to come with that graph but that graph don't worry remember that was number 10 so you'll have um, eight in here, you know, nine, blah, blah. You're just going to interpret those two. The only thing that will be missing here um, is going to be that correlation coefficient. So now let's go back to that tab that says correlation. And um, this one is small, so I would just go where it says correlation and just copy it and then go to my thread and maybe, I don't know, insert it anywhere you want. Like maybe go next to the number seven, hit enter, and then paste like that. And that's totally fine. I mean, if you want to make the tables look good, you can click into the table and hit table properties right there. And I just usually put gridded like that. And it makes it look nice. Like here, I'll just go to table. I'll click into the table, hit table properties, go to um, class and then hit gridded. So class gridded and hit okay. And it makes that look a little nicer. And then um, you'll explain in number eight. So now I have number seven, number eight is gonna be interpretations and number 10 is now this high, this scatter plot. And of course you can always resize it so it's easy on the eyes or a little bit larger. And yeah, it's gonna look a little different than what we have here in the Excel right? But it's still great. In fact, it has a 95% confidence interval. So that's great. And then in number 11, up here, you're just going to interpret the slope and y-intercept and go ahead and now go to that walkthrough video to do that. The last piece is to construct the hypothesis test. So if you choose to do that, you can go into the walkthrough video to check that out. But um, I just wanted to make sure you saw where the p-value was. So if I go back to mini tab, to regression analysis 
in this model summary, you're like, where is it, right? Um, if you go to analysis of variance and you look on the top headers here, you're gonna see P and it says P.027. Okay, if I go to the Excel spreadsheet and also look up the p-value, notice it's also 0.027. So you're going to have the same results. So the p-value is p, and that's your p-value. So when you go ahead and do the um, hypothesis test, like I have here on the extra credit, the p-value here in this one is 0.2347, and notice that that's on the spreadsheet. In our case, that p-value will be the p. 0 0.027 and in the table as I moved it over and copy and paste it notice it's right there 0 0.027 so you'll have that p-value for your hypothesis test if you wanted to um, do the extra credit okay and that's and that's really it and then of course 8 9 is going to be your interpretations number 10 will be this this scatter plot and then um, number 11 again is going to be interpretations right of your slope and y-intercept and then you can do the extra credit down here you know and how that will be and all you need for the extra credit is this the rest is really you but extra credit just needs that p-value and that's it okay so i hope you found this helpful and it wasn't that confusing i did put up the excel spreadsheet just so you could compare and see that you get the same results and it's Using mini tab is just as nice. The only hiccup there is the fact that you'll have to do the Pearson correlation separately, or you can take the R squared here and take the square root. It's up to you, but there it's all there. It's just an extra button to push. And then the spreadsheets, again, you don't lose anything. You have these tabs here. So for the regression analysis, you go to stat regression fitted line plot for that first tab. For the second one, the correlation coefficient that we're using is going to be stat, basic statistics, and correlation. And just make sure that you go ahead and go to that options and make sure it's on Pearson correlation and your confidence level is whatever your alpha would be, 95%.